Hey guys, welcome. Yeah, so um, first and foremost, thank you, Lord Jesus Christ, for everything as always. I love you. You're amazing. Um, thank you. Um, okay, and second, in this video, we're going to talk about what implicit differentiation means, but for functions of multivariables. Um, so for multivariable functions, um, yeah? Okay, we remember what implicit differentiation was for uh, single variable functions, but in this video, yeah. Okay, now, um, before we start, um, like a few, or more than a few of you have said that like you enjoy when I tell you stories in between the math, like I really want this channel to be strictly about math, and so I won't do that. Um, but occasionally I will share stories at the end. So I have like an interesting story I'll share about this shirt uh, at the end of this video. But otherwise, yeah, um, let's do the math, okay? Oh, and uh, just before that though, like yes, this coronavirus thing is getting serious, but again, only fear Jesus Christ. And if Jesus wants you to die, you would have died already. So it's like, don't fear this or that. Like. First of all, you only die once. Second of all, it's like if Jesus wants you to die, your like fate is in his hands. So um, just follow Jesus, surrender, and otherwise like live your life like everything is normal because everything is uh, with him especially, okay? All right, now uh, example zero here. So I will provide at least one more example. That'd be example one by my counting. <laughs> okay, but um, yeah, before we talk about what implicit differentiation is like for um, functions of uh, multivariables uh, for multivariable functions I'll just say that uh, from now on uh, let's talk about what implicit differentiation looked like for single variable functions so suppose that we consider the curve x squared plus y squared is equal to 9 now we should all know that this is a circle centered at the origin with radius 3 right now so we're saying that we can solve it for y if we want and write that y is equal to plus or minus the square root of um, 9 minus x squared, right? 9 minus x squared. Now, we must elect if we need positive square root or negative square root, right? The positive square root represents the top half of the circle, the negative square root is the bottom half. Uh, and together, they don't make a function. A circle is not a function. It doesn't pass a vertical line test. But if we elect one of them, and if we elect the positive, we don't need the plus sign, right? Okay, so if we want to find dy dx, now that we've got y as an explicit function, which is we've written y equals stuff that has to do with x, so y is strictly a function of x. So since we have this, we could just do derivative the good old way, which is, right, this is like 9 minus x squared to the positive 1 half power, because that's what square root means, right? And so then we see that dy dx, dy dx, which is equal to y prime, right? dy dx is equal to y prime when we just have y equals, when y is explicitly defined, right? So dy dx, which is equal to y prime, is going to equal 1 half, and then it's going to be 9 minus x squared to the negative 1 half times minus 2x, right? Okay, notice that this um, 2 there and that 2 will cancel, but if we simplify everything, we see that dy dx, right? dy dx, which in this case is the same as y prime, is equal to what? It's equal to minus x all over the square root of, minus x all over the square root of, with, what is it going to be? Um, 9 minus x squared, right? Okay, cool. All right, so there we are. All right, but we could have found dy dx using implicit differentiation because here the relationship between y and x is defined implicitly, whereas here it's explicitly defined. So if we do implicit differentiation here, remember the rule for single variable implicit differentiation is that every time you take the derivative of a term that has a y, um, then you must multiply by chain rule by dy dx. So anytime you take a derivative of something involving a y, you immediately have to multiply by dy dx. That was the rule. So we go, fine, so 2x, that's all good. And oh yeah, the other rule was take the derivative on both sides of the equal sign. That goes without saying, but yeah, we must also do that. So those are the two rules, if we consider them rules. So the derivative of x squared is 2x, and then we go plus the derivative of y squared is 2y. I just took a derivative of something that has a y, so I must multiply by dy dx. I do that. Equals, and remember, we must take the derivative on both sides, so the derivative of 9 on the right side is 0. Got it. So then we go uh, 2y, and then dy dx 
it's equal to negative 2x, right? It's equal to negative 2x, fine. And then next, we divide by um, 2y, right? By 2y, and we can now get dy dx by itself, and also cancel this 2 and this 2. So we see dy dx is uh, minus x divided by y. Now, since we already have y handy again, once we've decided if we mean the top half or the bottom half of the circle, we know that y is equal to for um, positive square root for the top half, y is equal to the square root of um, 9 minus x squared. Um, and so uh, there we are, and we see that these two things agree, right? They're in agreement. Good. All right, cool. So that's how single variable implicit differentiation worked. Now, I already have a video series on single variable implicit differentiation with some incredibly well chosen questions. So check out that video series. You'll get a lot out of it. But again, this video is about multivariable implicit differentiation. As this is example zero, I wanted to talk about the big picture on multivariable implicit differentiation, which means drawing parallels from what we just did over here. So that's why we just talked about this. But yeah, um, sorry. So uh, there will be additional examples on multivariable implicit differentiation, but this has now laid very good foundations for what we're gonna do over here with multivariable um, implicit differentiation. All right. First of all, when we're talking about a multivariable function, we don't have y equals f of x. In this case, you know, we've got here y equals f of x when it's um, uh, explicitly written. Even when we're lucky for multivariable functions and our curve is explicitly defined, what we have is f of x equals, no, sorry, for multivariable functions, we don't have f of x, we have f of x y equals uh, z, right? Okay, so, like the vertical axis in this situation is y, the horizontal axis from which our inputs come is the x-axis. The analog here is the vertical axis is the z-axis, the input is the xy plane, right? Okay, so that's why the inputs are x comma y and then the output is the height along the z-axis, right? And it may be negative. So anyway, anyway, that's the point, right? That's the analog, okay. so. Um, what example can I provide you on an explicitly defined function? Well, remember, in this example, I started with an implicitly defined function that we are able to transform to be explicitly defined. So if I'm really doing a good analog, then I should give you a function of two variables that could be explicitly defined, right? And so that way, like the next example, example one, will be ones where we cannot do this, right? Remember, in this um, first example, we have functions that are like, very hard to uh, like, you know, get y by itself on. For example, x y plus sine x y e to the x squared y equals uh, nine. If this was our equation as opposed to this, good luck getting y by itself here. That is good luck turning this into an implicitly defined function. So such a thing exists over here also. As you'll see in example one, there will be functions, uh, multivariable functions where we're not able to explicitly define and no matter what algebra we do. But my first example here, just like this one, is gonna be one where we will be able to explicitly define but also do implicit differentiation. So exactly the analog of what I did over here. So this uh, multivariable function is x squared plus y squared is equal to z squared. Got it. Okay, so now, again, uh, if I want z equals f of x, y, that is, if I want to follow what we did over here, then what I would do over here is, just as what we did over there, get z by itself, so that it's say, well, in this case, we got y by itself, because that was the vertical axis. In this case, z is the vertical axis. So I go z is equal to plus or minus the square root of, uh, and then it's x squared plus y squared. Just as we did over there, we must left positive or negative square root. So I do this. Okay, got it. Now it's of the form z equals f of x, y, right? So that's like when you had y equals f of x over here, right? Okay, so then in this case, uh, what we have is, well, since this is not a function of a single variable, before when it was, we just had dy dx. But now we know that since z is a vertical axis, it's gonna be dz, but it's not the good old dz, it's the partial dz, and it's dz over dx, right? And we also have such a thing as dz over dy. Again, partials because, well, 
and this is a multivariable function. It's f, sorry, it's f of x comma y, which is z, right? We already wrote it over here. And so since it's two variables, it only makes sense to talk about partial derivatives, and also we can talk about partial with respect to one variable and partial with respect to the other variable. Now remember, when we're able to uh, explicitly <laughs> define our function, we're like passionately going on and on and on, like we're getting to pause, pause. Um, so yeah, like when um, we had y equals, and it was a single variable function, right? Uh, and it, it, we were able to write it explicitly, right? We are able to get y by itself. Then dy dx was just y prime. So it turns out that dz dx is just fx when we are able to get z equals and then everything else in terms of x and y, dz dx is simply fx. That is, you don't have to do implicit differentiation. You don't have to do multivariable implicit differentiation when you're able to isolate z. You just do the partial with respect to x and that's dz dx and you do the partial with respect to y and that's dz dy. Okay, but again, I will take the same example I show you multivariable implicit differentiation finally. All right, so, but just as we did here, like let's compare the two answers. One done without implicit differentiation and the other done with implicit differentiation. So if we do it without implicit differentiation as we did in black here, if we finish in black, fx, the partial with respect to x, let's write z as x squared plus y squared to the one half. fx just means treat y as a constant. And of course, treat constants as constants also. So fx, which is dz dx in this case, is going to be equal to one half, and then it's x squared plus y squared. y squared is a constant to the negative one half, and then times, times what? By a chain rule, times two x. All right, okay, so we see that um, dz dx is going to equal, what is it gonna be? Just as before, this, this two and this one half are gonna cancel, and so we're gonna have x over, and then it's square root of x squared plus y squared. All right, okay, and for this, since I kinda ran out of space here, let's write it over there. dz dy, that's fy, and there's strong symmetry between fx and fy in this case. So we can very quickly write the answer. It's y over square root of x squared plus y squared, right? Got it. And again, this is fx, and it's also uh, dz dx, since we're able to get z by itself. And this is uh, fy, but it's dz dy. And finalement, finally, finally, you thought this would never come, right? OK, finally, um, we do this, but with multivariable implicit differentiation. OK. so. That's we can't write it as z equals f of x, y. Well, in that case, we just start with this and do implicit differentiation on this, just like how we started with that and did implicit differentiation on that using red. So let me use select the right color. Okay. Um, <laughs> okay, so what's the rule for multivariable implicit differentiation? Exactly the same as the rule for single variable implicit differentiation, which is one, take the derivative on both sides. But this time, instead of when you encounter a y multiplied by dy dx, if we're doing dz dx, when we encounter z, we have to immediately multiply by uh, dz dx. That is when we encounter a term containing z. Upon taking the derivative of that, if we're looking for this, we have to multiply immediately by dz dx once taking the derivative of a term that has a z in it. And if we're looking for this, once taking the derivative of a term that has a z in it, we immediately multiply by dz dy. So very much like that, yeah? Okay, all right, so let's do it. So um, if I write this like the way I should have written it, which is z equals x squared plus y squared. Let's start with it over here. So z squared, rather, sorry, equals x squared plus y squared. Remember, we're gonna get our answers to match. Now we're ready to do multivariable implicit differentiation. So let's take the derivative on the left side. That's gonna be two z. But wait, I just took the derivative of something that has a z in it. And since I am first seeking this, I have to immediately multiply this by, let's use a different color so it stands out. I have to multiply by uh, dz dx. Okay, equals what? Well, equals two uh, x, the derivative of this. And remember, since we're doing it with respect to x now, Anything with strictly a y is a constant. 
So this is a constant, its derivative is zero. So we see that dz dx, the blue dz dx, which I'm now going to write in red, dz dx is going to equal 2x over 2z. Okay, but let's cancel this 2 and this 2. That says x over z. We had solved for z here because this time we're able to uh, write it explicitly. So we see that dz, d, dz dx is going to equal x over z is square root of x squared plus y squared. Voila. Matches. Okay, cool. And so if we're trying to figure out uh, what that is, we're doing it with respect to y, then what we'd write is, again, we'd go uh, to start, uh, we'd go 2z, can I erase here? Where do I, where do I make space? I'll just fit it in here. So I could do this. So I go 2z, but this time I multiply by dz dy. So I go dz dy. Again, there will be harder examples to come in the next video. And this is going to equal what? Well, this time, since we're doing with respect to y, x squared is a constant, so its derivative is 0, so we just get 2y. Got it. And then next, we're going to divide by 2z on both sides, right? Okay? And so we get dz dy. We get dz dy, right? It's equal to y over z. Got it. But z is right here. So we see that that's going to say y over the square root of x squared plus y squared. And you see that this dz dz, sorry, dz dy matches that dz dy. Yeah? Okay, this is all I've got for now. Um, but example one to come soon with um, doing more of this, the implicit differentiation, because, well, an example one, the functions we're going to encounter are not uh, going to be... Uh, explicitly written it's not possible to write them explicitly okay I did promise a story on the shirt right so like I'll do it really quickly so once upon a time a long time ago about eight years ago I worked for like a very high-end tutoring firm it's probably like the most expensive tutoring firm in America and they paid pretty well uh, better than anything in the industry to be honest um, so I was pretty fresh out of college and whatnot and um, so, like, basically, once I get to the office, which was in Harrison, New York, I would, like, there's about a 10-minute walk to the train station. Almost every tutor just walked, because, like, most intellectual people just, like, like walking and thinking. Uh, it's not like we're making good, good, really good money, so we could have afforded a cab for that 10-minute walk. Uh, but I would always walk it. And so, like, being the stubborn person that I am, like, one day it was, like, really snowy, and it was a real winter as opposed to the winter these days which <laughs> is like it's like March now it's like as warm as uh, like summer if you go outside but anyway those days are like real winter days right so like full of snow and like uh, yeah it was super super cold in Harrison that day and so I still decided to walk instead of um, taking a cab but I was not careful about what kind of shoes I wear like as you can see like I dress however the heck I want and um, so like I don't really consider check the weather. I have never ever left my house having looked at what uh, the weather was like. I like the pleasant surprise that I find when I go outside. <laughs> like usually I could look out the window and it's like right by a big street. That's why you hear all the noise. So like I could look out the window and see what's how it's like outside. But um, that's about the gauge. I don't ever gauge the temperature. Anyway, you know since like some of those habits are uh, hard to kill. Like I like was doing the same thing that day so I wore like uh, maybe all stars or basically inappropriate shoes to uh, the day that was out waiting, <laughs> waiting me outside <laughs> and so that 10 minute walk like my entire like shoe was soaked in snow covered in snow so like while I was awaiting the train we get we get a delay on the train uh, we see we get a notification that the train is delayed yeah well it's terrible weather so of course like there are gonna be delays and stuff so anyway, like the delay ended up being an hour and a half. Like uh, luckily they had one of those like overpass like by the train station that like was completely housed and they had heaters at the top. I guess they're used to really cold winters in Harrison. So I went there like and like like a, with a f few other people and like stood under the heater like waiting for the train to arrive. But that was a long wait as you can imagine. And so like even though the upper body of mine was like able to benefit from the heater thingies and they should have that in Brooklyn also anyway 
well that was the case <laughs> uh, like you know it didn't really reach the bottom of my feet like I'd have to be able to do one of them things and like I'm like nah like I'm too cool for that no, <laughs> no. anyway anyway like I, yeah I had to like stand upside down if I if I wanted like it to reach my feet so my feet were killing me like it was so cold that I was like oh my god what do I do about this because like the pain was becoming intolerable so the shirt came in so I bought the shirt like relatively recently like maybe about like five months ago or whatever because i was able to track it down but for a while for a long while since like that day at harrison like i couldn't find the shirt and in, in this color like even online i looked for it but anyway i had the same exact shirt all those years back but um what is it that day like again my feet are killing me and there's still like 45 minutes to like wait for the train so this is like what math is actually useful for because it allows you to, to think like in very creative ways so like uh, what do I do well like this is short sleeve this one but the uh, first one that I had in the same color same exact design had long sleeves so I took off my socks like I wiped down my feet with like the socks that were actually on me and that were like killing me because it was so cold I like wiped my uh, feet clean and then I ripped my um, <laughs> my sleeves I took off my shirt for a quick moment like I took off my jacket and my shirt and I ripped the sleeves and then wore them as socks and that made the weight so <laughs> much easier I hope you enjoyed this keep watching take care all right when um yeah yeah <laughs> Bye.